Hi guys, I'm going to be unboxing the Framework laptop today. Just received it uh, from FedEx just earlier today. And uh, this happens to be the DIY edition. It's one up from the i5. It's the i7-1165. And uh, I grabbed uh, some RAM off Amazon, 32 gigs of uh, 3200 DDR4, uh, dual rank, and two terabyte uh, NVMe from Samsung. All right, let's get into this. So you can see the power adapter. Looks like some, some bag of documents. There's, oh, that's probably the expansion cards. I ordered an orange bezel, so that's nice to see it came with it. And here's the laptop itself. The box uh, looks like it made it here relatively unscathed, so that's nice. So let's take a look at the power adapter first. This nice box. So USB-C uh, cable, both double-ended. One end is a uh, 90 degree. And this tiny little 60 watt power brick. Nice. And let's take a look at the expansion cards. It says tab to open. Well, that didn't go as planned. Okay, here's the Wi-Fi card. I got the, the Intel one that Framework uh, sells on their website. And I think I have about six or, or I have seven expansion cards. So I have two USB-Cs, two USB-As, a micro SD because uh, I film with my GoPro a lot, and uh, display port and HDMI. Display port and HDMI I'm probably never going to use but it's nice to have in case I need it. All right. So that's the hardware. Here's the bezel. Now let's take a look at the laptop. Looks like it's got a seal. Small little box. Here it is. So it's a 13 and a half inch screen and it's a three by two aspect ratio. Nice compact little laptop. I'm coming from a 15 inch MacBook so it'll take some adjusting to get used to the smaller screen again. And here is the screwdriver it comes with. I believe this is double ended. If you pull this out, you can swap it to a Phillips end or a, a Torx T5. Then here's a spudger. Take this out of its sleeve. It's a nice aluminum, aluminum case. So we'll get this open and we'll start installing the, the components. So looks like these are five T5 screws.
hopefully that uh, screw isn't bent. So we flip it back over and we'll start prying up. We'll be careful not to rip the ribbon cable. I believe we just pull from this tab here and that's it. So this is the keyboard assembly. It has a nice long ribbon cable. See, as you can see, everything is replaceable from the touchpad to the keyboard. And made completely out of aluminum. So to start with, all right, so I unboxed all the components first. And I think I'm going to start with the Wi-Fi card since I hear this one's the most difficult. Okay. Just going to put that in and cable manage these cables. Okay, I had it the wrong way around. And then we'll put the screw back in. Making sure not to cross thread it. And these don't need a lot of torque, so just finger tight. That's good. Don't go cranking on these screws or else you'll end up with a bad day. So next we go with our two terabyte 970 Evo Plus from Samsung. Apparently the other hard, the other uh, NVMEs are known to run hot, so I chose this one instead. And put these aside so we don't mix them up. And it's nice that there's already a screw here, and there's also three spare screws up here, which is very nice. Just a matter of putting it in the slot all the way and then pushing down on this end. People say you should be wearing a static bracelet, but honestly, I've built so many computers and as long as you're not rubbing your uh, socks around on carpet before you're touching your computer, you should be fine. There's no need to, uh, to lose sleep over it or be extra cautious. And for RAM, this oh, Wi-Fi popping out of its cable management again. So the RAM goes in like this. You see where the, the key is. Just push it in and then snap it down. I'm just gonna push this. Alright, try the other side first. Alright, that went in much more smoothly. Yeah, I think these cable management. They're held in with uh, adhesive tape, and I think they were put a little too close to the round. So grab our second stick. We heard a nice click, so that's a good sign. And uh, that's all the components. That's a good way to save yourself about three hundred dollars, uh, and that's three hundred uh, American Canadian pesos is probably around four four hundred or three ninety. You're saving. 
and uh, just taking a look at the components. So it's a 56.64 watt hour battery. The maximum they can realistically fit in a laptop is 99, but that comes at the cost of weight. So 56 should be a good for you. Relatively uh, power efficient laptop. All right. Now we're going to put the keyboard back on. We're going to be relatively be careful with this connector. Just going to place the keyboard here first and make sure we seat the connector in. Alright, let's make sure that cable's lined up before you start pushing on it. Didn't want to break anything. Then make sure nothing's folded. We'll stick that back on. And then turn this around and put the screws back in. Luckily the screws are captive, so you can't really lose these. And it doesn't really matter what particular order you screw these back in. Just uh, don't overdo it on the tightness. Just screw it in until you feel it slow down and make it two finger tight. Okay, this is the screw that is going in. It was a little wobbly. And that's it. This will get some expansion cards. You need at least one USB-C uh, expansion card in it to charge because uh, the charge is for USB-C. Unbox this one. So for this one, I think I'll put it on. If you turn this around, this will be the top uh, left of the laptop. Push it until it clicks. I guess if you want to remove it, you can. You got to push this button and pull up. And for the second one, I'll probably put in a old-fashioned USB-A because I still have a lot of a lot of stuff that uses USB-A. So USB-A. So I'm gonna push this into here until it clicks. And I think the next ones I'll probably put in a micro SD. I think for the micro SD I'll probably put it up here. As you can see it's just a little tiny slot. It'll be interesting to see how fast the transfers are with this. Hopefully it's fairly fast. And obviously it depends on the micro SD you have too. And my next one will either be a USB-C or a USB-A. I think I'm probably going to throw in a USB-A. So in total, at the moment, I'll have a US two USB-As, one USB-C and a micro SD. That usually will suffice for most of my uses. 
and that's it. So there's the two ports. All right, so for a size comparison, this is a 15 inch MacBook Pro from um, 2014. And this is the framework. Framework is much lighter, like probably half the weight. That is a bright orange. So to take out the bezel, I believe you open this to 180 degrees. And then you just... Oops, and then um, snap it off down here. And that comes right off. So then we'll put in the orange bezel. That looks pretty nice. All right. Now that uh, it's plugged in and charging, we're gonna put in our Windows 10 install media and boot it up for the first time. It's gonna boot it up without uh, pressing anything. Boot drive. All right, this is take two. I just to make sure it's not this uh, USB. I had another installation media created for Windows 10 Pro, so hopefully this gets recognized. If not, I'm gonna probably have to resort to calling support. Oh, maybe it was my USB. Wow, okay. I'm glad I didn't call support and blame it on the laptop. Because this has worked before in the past, but... Uh, this is, I guess it's a good thing to not jump to conclusions. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. So... See if it's got Okay, it doesn't have enough adapter. 